Hello everyone, my name is Blender Helix Alpha, or Gray Walker, from YouTube.com, and welcome to my next part of my Blender Beginners tutorial. On the last part, we learned how to grab, rotate, scale, select, move around in our viewport, and I told you a little bit about the basic Blender navigational menus here. This next tutorial, we're going to be learning about how to edit a mesh and we're going to jump into some really really basic modeling. In the last tutorial I told you how to size but I didn't show you exactly how to size. To size an object you press S. This will give you a mouse cursor that you can move and it will determine the size of your scale that you want to do. If you want to size something on a specific axis you have to determine which axis you want to size on first and if you want to size up and down it will be the blue arrow here the Z axis so we can press S for size and after we press S hit Z and this will lock it to the Z axis if you find a size that you like you can click the left button on your mouse to confirm. To size on the x-axis you can hit S, X. Hit left click to confirm. Next we'll learn a little bit about rotating. If you hit R you can rotate an object on the editor's center view. This is not efficient or good to do because you can really mess up some rotations and uh, let me show you why. If you left click here to confirm that you can see that it has a weird rotation now and that's what happens when you rotate an object without giving it a specific axis while rotating it. So if we wanted to rotate this object on the x-axis we could go to R, X just like we did with sizing except we're not sizing we're rotating so we went RX and now it's locked into the X position or the X rotation axis and we can hit left click to confirm but as you can see we tried to rotate it to be straight this way but it's not totally exact it's a little bit off and we can mess around with it and try to get it perfect but because the human eye isn't exactly perfect with the 3D space, it's not going to be a perfect alignment. So what we can do is hit Control Z and use a mathematics equation. It's not really a mathematics equation, but it's more of just a mathematical input on Blender. It's very, very simple. All you have to do is hit R, X, then we want to rotate it 90 degrees on the, on the X axis. So we hit RX and then 9-0. And you can just use the number keys on your keyboard. And as you can see here, on Blender it says Rote 90 along global axis X. And we can hit click to confirm. So you just rotated your cube on the X axis by 90 degrees. You can also do this with Y axis by going Y or R Y 90 or R Y 180 to flip it on the other direction. Or you can go to R Z 90. But we're going to keep it with our original shape. So we'll go back to this. If you want to clear all the rotations of your object, you can hit Alt and R. If you want to clear all of the translations, and center it new, you can hit Alt G. Alt S will clear all the sizes as well. But we'll keep our shape. Again, to go into edit mode, you press Tab, or you can use this menu here. Like I said in the last tutorial, the default selection method is vertices. We'll stick with that just for the time being. Also, we'll leave back facing culling on, so we can't see what's, in, what's behind us. Let's select these vertices. 
this selected automatically this face in front. An extremely powerful tool for 3D modelers is the extrude tool. The extrude tool is featured in most every 3D modeling program including all Autodesk products. To extrude in Blender all you have to do is hit E. This just created a new set of whatever you have selected. We can move this set in the default specified region and click to confirm. And now we have a new cube that's part of the same object that we can size, rotate, or grab. But let's go ahead and extrude this and click immediately so that we don't move it. The vertices are still there, but they are invisible because there are two vertices directly on top of each other. This is not good because this can really mess up the geometry and it's not a good way of modeling because points converging on each other will lead to bad graphical issues. We still have those extruded vertices selected and what we can do with them now is size them down. Because we have these four vertices selected, the sizing method is going to be centered. So there's no reason to use an axis while sizing. So then we can just hit S and move our mouse inwards to size it down. Left click to confirm. Let's make a door. I have an idea that will make a really cool door. As you can see here, these sides are shorter than these sides. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, let me show you a little bit further. Because we sized it, it moved it directly inwards towards the center. And because our cube is longer or taller than it is long, it moved it a little bit more on the upper than it did on the sides. So let's correct that by scaling these vertices on the Z axis up and down. So let's hit S and Z. Let's just correct that a little bit. So now that you can see it's a smooth line from here to here to here. All the same distance. Okay. Now, not only can you extrude outwards, but you can extrude inwards. Extruding outwards would look like this. And again, that's just hitting E. And extruding inwards would look like this. Let's left click to confirm that. Next, what you can do is tab out into object mode again. And as you can see here, our point of spawning, I just, I call it the spawn point, um, basically because wherever you create an object, it will create an object on this point. And you can reposition the point by left clicking. I don't suggest using this because there's really no reason to, um, to center it back to zero, zero, zero on your 3D space. You can hit shift C. And now if we hit shift A, add mesh cube, we'll get the cube in the middle instead of way over here. So let's make another door object. We have our doorway. So let's use what we've learned to scale our door and make it the right scale. And then we're going to hit seven on our numpad to go to our top view. And now we're going to learn a little bit about pivot points. Now all we've done with this cube is have scaled it from its original axis. It's still in the middle. It's still um, the same rotation and the same translation. All we have done is mess with the scale. I'm going to go and go ahead and hide this doorway uh, with H just so we can work with this cube right now. This cube is going to be our door. So all we have to do right now is move our pivot point. 
and if we wanted to rotate this door on the Z axis it wouldn't rotate like a normal door it would rotate from the middle we don't want to do that we want to rotate it like it has a hinge here so what we can do is go into edit mode and this orange dot that you see here is its pivot point and what we can do is move the mesh so that the pivot point is right where we want it to be so now the center of the pivot point will be here you can reposition the mesh any way you'd like and the pivot point will still be there if we rotated the pivot point from the z-axis from, from there this will happen but if we have the pivot point where we want it like a hinge and we rotate on the z-axis we can get a door type motion so let's drag our door out here drag over our mesh in edit mode rotate it on the z-axis so that we have an open door if we wanted to give our door a doorknob what we can do is shift A UV sphere and that will give us a sphere in the middle on our spawn point we can hit S to size that sphere down and drag it out using this arrow here or we could hit GX to grab it on the X axis and we can click to confirm that location and drag it over here where a doorknob would be and now we can rotate our door oh wait our doorknob isn't part of our door yet so what we can do is select both of these objects by holding down shift remember shift allows you to select multiple objects or items so now we have both selected and we want to join these objects and the way that we can join these objects is control J and that will give you a your original pivot point and it will add both objects into the same edit mode converge the objects and join them so they're all one object now if I wanted to rotate this door the door knob would also rotate let's scale the door on the Z on the x-axis just to make it look a little bit more dory alright guys this is part two I really hope that you enjoyed we just made a door and the next part we're gonna animate the door and uh, maybe explore a few more modeling techniques I hope that you leave me a like and if, the, if you're new around here I, uh, I suggest you subscribe uh, because there's gonna be a lot of really cool videos coming out of this channel for the new year and uh, thanks a lot for watching guys I appreciate it and I'll see you later